What was the bubble like, man? Because we were talking about oh, this man. offline a little bit. Like, I know I heard you and Aaron Gordon did a pod that that's coming out as people are listening the same day. So check out the pod. Um, mm-hmm. But like the mental health aspect of it, the 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 repetitive, the Groundhog Day feeling. The I just was imagining because I know this from training camp. Every morning waking up, hitting that elevator button, and being like, oh, "I'm going to work again." <laughs> It's the same thing. I haven't been outside that guard booth outside. I've been bass fishing in the same fucking pond out in front of out in front of the Epcot Center. How yeah. how tiresome is that that people don't even realize behind the scenes? Um, it said like I've done a lot of mental health uh, interviews, pods because of how people know how draining it was on your mental. Um, but and I said I use this analogy. I think it might have been Aaron's or another friend of mine's pod. It doesn't matter what kind of setup you have for someone. It could be their heaven. You know what I'm saying it could be their best. You could put all the video game, have the best man cave, you know, and put Snacks. it together. If you put them in that type of environment for too long, or three and a half months, they're gonna get tired of it. They're gonna go crazy. No matter what it is, no matter what setup. And it was tough. And I felt like our setup was pretty good for the most part. Um, but not having your family and friends there for the first two months, you know, a lot of your, your wives or girlfriends. Um, and then, you know, they're there for the last month. Um, it's tough. And then you have to perform every day, not just yeah. that you have to go. So imagine your perfect setup, but you just have to do work. You have to do work every day. And it's, a, you know, physical on your body, mind, and only people are watching you. Everybody in the world's watching you and they get to critique you on social media, on TV and tell you what you did, what you're doing wrong. You could be throwing paper planes for all we care. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was your job. Mm-hmm. People got a chance to critique you and you get to do this every day, you know, for a certain amount of hours, you know, you, it would drain you mentally and emotionally. Man. So it's really hard to put it into words and describe how tough it was. Uh, but I don't, I think the reason why we're not doing it ever again, because guys are very opposed to it. And I think the league understood how, how tough it was and how it could affect long-term of guys mental and emotional stability um you know throughout their careers do you think guys battled like things like depression or guys found out that they were dealing with things that they didn't even realize they were they, do you think they learned anything about their mental health being in there for sure but i mean i know i did i learned a lot more yeah. about myself certain things that i didn't know was going on that's happening um and said we were there the longest. Obviously, it's different for different teams. And you know, I was talking to Philly. Philly's like we were there half the time. You guys were we were there fifty six days. Mm-hmm. You guys were in there for a hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can imagine, you know, what you guys were going through. Like we were home, and y'all were still in there. Um, so yeah, you learn what how much you your mind body can handle. Obviously, your mind and emotion emotionally how much you can handle. Um, but I don't think a lot of us handled it well. <laughs> right. And that's why I think we'll ever do it again. We got through it but we didn't handle it well and it wasn't good for us uh entirely you know as a as a as a human what was it like playing in front of like the actual playing in front of nobody like as a shooter is there something i'm not thinking about with the depth perception or not having Uh, fans in the stands or a little bit, a little bit. I think more so the fact that we're so used to having that we play for the crowd. A lot right, of us right. play with the crowd. Right. Um, that adrenaline boost. Um, you know, there was always, I always keep this in my mind for some odd reason. It stuck with me, I think, since college. You know, somebody said, if you're prepared, if you practice something, you keep doing it over and over. Yeah. You prepare yourself. Um, more likely than none, you usually do it at a higher or better, you perform better when you have an audience. Right. Um, so, you know, you were used to playing, we're used to practicing and we're used to shooting and said so that adrenaline helps you perform at another level. And, you know, just so be like, it just so happens. It, it sucked. The fact that the teams that work so hard to get home court didn't really have home court. Right. It would be interesting to see a lot of those teams that had lost that were higher seeds to actually play with their fans behind them. You know, there's a reason why they play much better teams, shoot better teams, um, you know, do execute better with their, their fans and, you know, that noise screaming for them. Um, they need that. And some guys just perform at a higher level, even all-stars, you know, you can see, um, even Bron, you know, Bron yeah. is, a, is a, is a guy that played, even though he played so well, you could tell early in the bubble, it was affecting him. It wasn't, he's not used to not being in front of or hearing that noise. Didn't look to be you having know, as hearing, much fun. No, it's not as fun. And that's how he plays. Basketball still, you know, all, all sports still, you want to have some type of fun yeah. with it. Um, 
but I said a lot of guys used to used to playing for a crowd or, or you know with a crowd behind them that adrenaline helps them make the next big play the next shot when you don't have that there or even when you make a big play and there's no real sound you're like what the f-? yeah you dude. don't really understand the magnitude of the play if they're not there i think sometimes i sat there as a, as a and i i understood the magnitude of what you guys were doing because the country normalcy in sports is huge and feeling like mm-hmm. there's something going on that you can bond with other team or other fans of a team and you can watch something on tv like i think too many people took it lightly what you guys were doing for all the the reasons we just talked about but sometimes i was like have you ever seen the movie truman show like i felt like yes. this was a situation it was one of my favorite movies i i felt like it was a situation where like it was borderline exploitative like in in the situation making you guys go out there and just turn the music up fucking put some crowd noise in there and i i thought it was probably surreal at times in the finals especially like did you ever sit there and thinking like there's nobody in this gym when i leave this building they'd show the aerial of that that orange stucco building and i was so tripped out by the fact that you guys would go, leave the building at night hundreds of millions of people watching you walk out those doors i could almost hear the silence in my head walking back it's to the cricket <laughs> and walking back to that that quiet hotel room you were in was that just like the biggest mind fuck it's just i think at that point we were so used to it um we were so locked in that we don't really realize so after you know doing interviews and watching the games and you're watching our, us play the finals and you're remembering how quiet it was when you made this play when you made that shot which is not normal. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're like, man, we won. And I'm like, damn, it's empty in it. Like we're making these plays. And like, it was watching these highlights. It doesn't look like a finals game at all. Um, but, but yeah, did, we were just did a good job, at that point, though. we're used to it. They did they a good did, job, really with the, job with the dress and the court up. Cause it almost made it look normal. Give me one team real quick that you think would have made a longer run because of the reason what type of team would benefit from style of play from the crowd being into it. Like a Miami, you guys, I'm sure you'd say you'd beat them anyways, oh, for sure. but Miami would be one that I would think if they had, you know, American airlines or whatever it is down there, it would be pretty live. Miami and Philly, even though I'm here now, were great at home, yeah. but tough. They weren't as good on the road. Right. So them, they beat, not saying they wouldn't have made the finals, but beating like Milwaukee four one, that would have been tough. They beat everybody else like four one. Um, I think but playing in Boston is a, is a tough uh, oh, yeah, Boston, place to play. For sure. I think Boston probably would have thrived. I think, you know, some other teams definitely. Uh, Denver came back through one twice, which I, is tough to do. I don't know how well they would have done that with fans and being on the road playing against those teams. But still, imagine the altitude um, up there. That that thing's real when you play basketball for sure. too, right? I mean, it's just... Definitely. So I mean, that, you, but, a couple teams got their home home court taken away pretty good. I mean, y'all included. But, that would have been so crazy down the stretch. But Utah definitely has a good fan base, and I think them up being three, being up three one. Not saying Denver wouldn't have beat them, but them being up three one with their fans behind them, and Denver having to beat them in their home court yeah. at least once or twice to win win that seven game series would have been very tough. Yeah. Them to beat them and Clippers three uh, one would have been tough. Not saying they wouldn't have done it. But um, I think series would have been longer in the East because there was was a lot of blowout series. Yeah, Uh, you would have had more series like Toronto, Boston. Toronto, Boston went to Game Seven, and would have that have happened if they were fans? Maybe, maybe not. But it was a hell of a dogfight, and I think there'd been more series like that for Miami than there was four one, four zero. Like Miami beat a lot of teams easily in the East. Um, But yeah. It would have been interesting, man. But, you know, a lot of guys didn't get a chance to experience it. Uh, some rookies um, didn't only got half a season of fans. And so we have, you know, guys on our team here. It's like, I got to experience fans one time, man. I, I need to get, I need yeah. to experience it full on, like one full season. So you almost feel bad for 